I'm doing all right. I'm not dancing, but I'm all right, you know? Yeah, I'm doing okay. I, I, I'm from San Francisco. You know, I'm not a South Bay comic. I'm from San Francisco. And whenever I perform outside of San Francisco, I hear a lot of the same things. Like, how can you spend so much time in San Francisco? How can, it's all so many gay people. So many gay people. Oh, my God. I love the gay people in San Francisco. I do. I have a gay following that follows me from show to show in San Francisco. It's great. And when they realize that I'm not Rosie O'Donnell, they're going to be heartbroken. They are. It's February. I'm glad the fucking holidays are done. I am. Oh man, it's, I had to spend a lot of time with my family during the holidays. I'm kind of racially ambiguous. My mother's from El Salvador, my father's Armenian, you know? Yeah, there you go. So I had to fly down to SoCal and visit my mom's side of the family. I learned that when you travel on a Hispanic family's dime, you don't take name brand planes. You take, like, Enrique's plane. And you get on board, and you see the pilots. Enrique. <laughs> and he's had a few drinks. It's good to know his co-pilot was Jose Cuervo. That's great. You know, that's great. And I don't travel well in general. I'm at the gate in Oakland. You know, I'm playing my favorite airport game. Who's the terrorist? It's always the Pakistani guy who wins. I don't know why, but they're really good at that game for some reason, you know? So I'm staring at the guy because I've decided it's him. He catches me staring. So I have to play it off. So now he thinks I'm flirting with him. So fast forward to me blowing him in the men's room. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if I have to go down on a Pakistani gentleman in a men's room so he doesn't think I'm a racist, the terrorists have won. They have. <laughs> and I don't trouble in general. I get on the plane, and in the seat next to my seat is this woman. This was more than a woman. Um, this was Jabba the Hutt in a moo moo. <laughs> This woman was flowing into my seat and the seat on the other side of her. And I'm looking at her, and I'm looking at my ticket, and I'm looking at the seat, and I'm looking at her, and I'm looking at the ticket, so I'm gonna fucking make sure. She looks up at me and says, oh, is this your seat? Uh-huh. So I sit down, she lifts herself up. I'm like, okay, that's considerate. She proceeds to let herself flow back on top of me. So I got to sit there like Slave Girl Leia the rest of the flight. That was great. <laughs> So I get to LA, I get down there, I got to see my first gang fight, kind of. Well, I, I'll explain to you guys what happened. I'm driving, I'm in a rental car, I blow flat. I couldn't believe it, I'm pissed off, I pull into this parking lot. I'm sitting there, I'm all annoyed. I look out my window. I see all these guys wearing red. Shit. I look out the other window and I see all these guys wearing blue. And like, I'm freaking out, like I grew up in San Francisco, I'm looking for my West Side Story soundtrack. Let's just... You know, I don't know what to do. I'm freaking out. And then I realized that my car died between a Target and a Best Buy. <laughs> I love spending time with my family, but you know, it's like, I noticed that my, the generation below me has no idea what it feels like to grow up poor. Exactly, right? Like, I grew up in the TL in San Francisco. Not a great neighborhood. I get down to LA, and my niece, seven years old, bought her a Christmas gift. What are you going to send your brother? Give her a Barbie doll. She opens it up. The first thing she says is, where's Barbie's dream car? I played it off. Well, sweetie, this is teacher Barbie. She can't afford the dream car. She comes with debt. And my nephew, he's five years old. He's all excited too. He's speaking of Pokemon. He loves Pokemon. He freaks out about it. He's explaining it to me. Apparently Pokemon is an abbreviation for Pocket Monster. Thank God. So I'm pretty sure I'd lose it. I heard him say to his mom, Mom, I'm gonna go to my room and play with my pocket monster. <laughs> oh man, I'm spending a lot of time with my dad. My dad's getting older. He's at that age now where his war stories and his other stories are blending together. He'll start talking like, we're sort of surrounded. They ran out of ammo and they were fighting hand to hand. And then we started dancing. And that's why I met your mother. <laughs> my father, not a smart guy. I have memories as a kid of him going up to my mom and saying, tell the kids to go outside and P-L-A-Y so we can fuck. My father was not a smart guy. My, my brother, not smart either. He's not. We were kids. One day he ran home from school. He was all excited. He's like, Greg, I got an A in reading. That's a D. You know, my father, he never got angry though, never hit me or my brother. Whenever my father got angry, he'd take a deep breath, he'd count to a hundred, 
and then he'd pull my head out of the water. He never hit me in the head. <laughs> I gotta give my parents credit though, they did the best that they could, because they were told they couldn't have children. They were surprised. They were told they couldn't have kids by their landlord. <laughs> so to have a landlord. No, but I think about my childhood and I started to notice things. I think my first real betrayal in life was when I realized that the babysitter only hung out with me for the money. <laughs> so where are my single people at? <laughs> Let me hear something for the single ladies. The single ladies. <laughs> single ladies that don't have mates, anything like that. <laughs> I'm single. I've been single for a long time now. Yeah, me and Mike's girlfriend, we broke up, we had a lot of little differences, you know, I was a night person, she was a cheating whore. <laughs> she was the kind of girl that always pitched line, under guys, like Fernando. <laughs> That's where I dropped the line. She opened her place at night to surprise her. She'd meet, the, she'd meet me at the front door in lingerie, except she was coming home, you know? <laughs> like, it's never a good sign when you show up to her place and the parent says, quick, out the window. That's not a good sign, you know? And me and my girlfriend always argued about things, you know, like, her big thing was astrology, she loved astrology, she used it as a fucking excuse for everything. Oh, Greg, I'm a Scorpio, I'm a Scorpio, that's why I'm gonna fuck all your friends, I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> her being into astrology, all that meant was every morning I had to wake up before her, check for a horoscope to make sure my day wasn't gonna suck. <laughs> she loved Cosmo articles too. She showed me one that said a great way to spice up our love life, to get into it during the car wash. <coughs> no, it isn't. But it is a great way to ruin a church fundraiser. It is. <laughs> and Lutheran kids fucking stare. On uh, camera phones and shit now. Like, I don't get that. Like, I don't get why people want to be watched when they have sex. Whenever I'm done, my first thought is, man, at least nobody saw that. You know? <laughs> well, see me after the show then, ladies. <laughs> Who am I bullshitting? At this point, my sex life is like shooting a pool with a rope. <laughs> you know, I used to get really self-conscious when I had to buy condoms. I used to get really nervous about it. Now I don't. Now I'm over it. Now I really get self-conscious when I have to throw them away after they expire. <laughs> no, but guys, if you're gonna get lucky tonight, if you're gonna get laid, be safe. A lot of weird STDs out there, like AIDS. Scientists say to trace AIDS to a man and an orangutan in Africa. That means somewhere in Africa, a man and an orangutan were shooting heroin together. That's <laughs> <laughs> It seems like every woman I approach at this point in my life uses oral contraceptives. And they say no. <laughs> Be careful, guys. Condoms aren't 100% safe. They're not. I had two of them on me, and I got hit by a car. <laughs> Me and my girlfriend, she always complained about using condoms. She always complained, you're afraid using my diaphragm's a pain in the ass. Then I'm pretty sure you're using it wrong. My ex, not a smart woman. She was the kind of girl that had to reach into her bra to catch a tissue. I'm not a smart woman. I'm the only one out of my guy friends that's in a relationship right now. And they all feel the need to give me advice. You know, Frank, you gotta go to clubs. Go to clubs. That's how you go to clubs. Yeah, they're skinny, good looking, and can dance. I walk in there, I'm at the bar, taking shots of Patron, doing the truffle shuffle, you know? <laughs> like, I don't know how to impress women at a bar, you know? And what drives me nuts is when you're at a club, like, whenever you approach a girl at a club, it's not that you get rejected by women. Because when it comes to getting rejected by women, I'm like Obi Wan Kenobi at this point, you know? It's the fact that you get rejected with an audience. As soon as you get shot down by a chick at a bar or a club, every guy at the sides are like, damn. You get back to the bar, the bar has boring you shit before you order anything. Even the DJ's like, this next song goes out to my big fella who just got shot down with a dance. I don't know what to do with it. It's because I'm a big guy, you know, I have a bit of a weight problem. I can't keep hiding that from you guys, I gotta complain about that. I feel like, when you're a guy my size, people feel, feel the need to give you shit about your weight constantly. Like, everybody's always keep harping on me about losing weight. You know, my doctor's the most vocal one about it. So I finally crack. I never sent me with a gym membership. I get there. I have no idea what I'm doing, you know, so I figure I'll take a class. I go to the girl behind the counter, 24 hours. So, sweetheart, always put me whatever class is best for people my size. She put me in my mouth.